five meter four guys it's time to step things up to 600 horsepower just like in our previous videos ranging from 200 horsepower to 500 horsepower we've got five different combinations all that make over 600 horsepower lots of cool stuff we've got a stroker 408 we have two supercharged combinations both a 351 and a 302 and we have two turbocharged combinations a carbureted version and a fuel injected version lots of cool stuff Let's check it out. Well, it's certainly possible to make 600 horsepower with the 5 liter displacement. It would be very, very expensive. It would be a pretty wild combination, not something your average guy is going to do, but it's much easier with either displacement or some type of power adder, and that's exactly what we did here on our first one. We put together a good combination. This actually was a wrecking yard combination. It started out as a 5 liter Explorer short block which we put additional ring gap in. And then we added basically a top end package, although it wasn't a complete top end package. This all came from TrickFlow. It had a set of their um, TrickFlow 11R heads instead of their standard twisted wedge heads. But it had their stage two cam, which was a 540, 560, 224, 232, and 112 degree lobe separation angle, yes. Um, and we had the 11R 170 heads, so the smaller version of the 11R heads. Inch and three quarter header, you know, this was kind of a five liter Ford uh, fuel injected combination with a, a pretty upgraded cylinder head. So run in this manner naturally aspirated, our combination produced 408 horsepower and 397 foot pounds of torque. But to get it up to the 600 horsepower power level, we added a power adder. And in this case, it was a Torque Storm centrifugal supercharger. And you can see we easily exceeded 600 horsepower, 638 horsepower to be exact. The Torque Storm Supercharger is a centrifugal blower like a Vortec or a Pro Charger. And so it has a rising boost curve. Um, the Torque Storm is smaller compared to some of the other blowers. It is a really good, like about a 700 horsepower blower. And if you want to go beyond that, um, they do have, they do have dual Torque Storm kits, <laughs> which are pretty cool looking. And you, you know, you can add you know, maybe 1400 horsepower if you wanted to do that, since they'll each do, they'll each supply 700 horsepower. But this was a pretty simple combination. Um, add boost to a, you know, reasonable combination, a 400 horsepower combination, add a little bit of boost, and good things happen, allow you to make over 600 horsepower. Let's get to our next combination. Our next combination also relied on boost, but we also increased the displacement on this particular motor. This was a motor that I ran a comparison between a root supercharger, a centrifugal supercharger, and a turbocharger for the guys at Hot Rod way back, and this was a 327 inch stroker, so a 3.25 stroke and had a four inch bore. This combination had a set of aluminum Edelbrock Victor Jr. heads. It had an extreme energy 266 cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here for that. Pretty mild for this combination. It was also uh, a low compression, uh, so pretty mild for this combination. We ran this thing NA with a dual plane intake manifold and the 750 carburetor and the long tube headers that we always run run in this configuration. The NA combination produced 392 horsepower and 386 foot-pounds of torque. If you look at the 500 horsepower combinations, this is also the NA start for our the supercharged 327 that we did back then. But here's what happened when we installed the turbo. This was a single whole set turbo from the guys at HP Performance. This was run non-intercooled uh, because all of these combinations, the, the centrifugal blower, the roots blower, and the turbo were all run non-intercooled to keep the comparison, you know, as even as possible. This combination produced right at 600 horsepower, 599.7, and produced 608 foot-pounds of torque at a peak boost level of 8.6 pounds, although near the torque peak, the boost rose as high as 9.3 pounds. We were controlling it with a manual wastegate controller. So this combination actually worked out fairly well and shows what happens when you have a reasonable power output. You could easily make this kind of power NA from even a 302 and even a junkyard 302 like the Explorer or a five, any five liter Ford combination with a decent head and a decent set of cam or camshaft in it. An intake obviously would help, but we're blowing through a the carbureted dual plane with this turbo. Take a good combination, add boost, and good things happen. Let's get to our next combo. To illustrate that it's certainly possible to make 600 horsepower NA with a small block Ford, we did exactly that, but we stepped up in displacement. In this case, we put together a 408 inch stroker based on a 351 Windsor. So that's a four inch stroke. 
and the 4030 bore. We had a complete stroker assembly to apply to our 351 Windsor block. We topped this thing off with a set of trick flow heads. They were CNC ported uh, TFS Twisted Wedge 205 heads. We also had a trick flow cam. In fact, this was a whole top end package that uh, trick flow had supplied. It was a 574 595 lift split, 236 248 degree duration split, and 110 degree lobe separation angle. We started things off with an RPM air gap intake manifold, a dual plane, and a Holley 950 XP. We had inch and three quarter headers on this, and so equipped our 408 inch stroker produced 534 horsepower and 543 foot-pounds of torque. So now we know that looking at this graph, it makes more torque than horsepower. So what does this tell us about this combination? It tells us that it's still fairly mild and that there's a lot of power left on the table, especially with those 205 heads since they flow well enough to support well over 600 horsepower. And as it turns out, that's exactly where we were going to take this combination. The first thing we did was install a trick flow single plane intake manifold and that had a positive effect at least on the peak power output you can see in the typical single plane dual plane uh, trade-off the dual plane made more power up to 4600 rpm and then the single plane took off after that if you were going to run this at the track the single plane would definitely be the way to go because run from 4500 to 6500 you definitely make more average power the car would accelerate better and especially if you were going to rev it out farther than that which this thing could rev out to 7000 rpm but uh, the single plane would definitely be the way to go. But if you're driving around on the street, this thing lost 40 foot pounds down at 3,700 RPM. So you definitely would feel that and it might feel better driving around with all of that extra torque since you spend most of your time at lower engine speeds. Here was our final test. What we did was install an even larger camshaft. This was another camshaft from TrickFlow. This one was 595 lift a 250-254 degree duration split and 110 degree lobe separation angle. This pushed our peak power up over 600 horsepower, 602 horsepower. Peak torque was actually down compared to the uh, milder cam. Peak torque checked in at 533 foot-pounds of torque. Now this is definitely more geared toward the top end charge, but 600 horsepower NA. And again, if you were running this thing from 5,000 or so, up to 7,000, this would definitely be a good combination, and <laughs> it would be a lot of fun, especially in a Fox Mustang. Let's get to our next our combo. next 600 horsepower combination. I also combined displacement and boost, but not a stroker motor. This is actually a 351 Windsor, and again, from my favorite place, from the wrecking yard. This was a hydraulic roller deal, and it's a combination that I used to put the Edelbrock top end package on, and that combination did very well, upgrading basically a junkyard motor. I made one change to it for this combination because we went from a carbureted combination when we did that Edelbrock upgrade. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. Uh, it's, it's in one of the other combinations in the 400 horsepower combination. We went from the stock uh, 5.8 liter hydraulic roller combination, then we put the Edelbrock top end in it. It was a set of 185 CNC ported heads. It was the Edelbrock camshaft that came with that top end. That was a 230 or a 573 lift 582, 235, 239, and a 112 LSA. It also came with an RPM air gap when we ran that carbureted. But for this combination, and by the way, that combination made five or made 460, 460 horsepower. But I replaced the carbureted induction system for this combination with an EFI kit. We put an RPM2 upper and lower intake and a 75 millimeter throttle body, a set of 83 pound injectors. It was all controlled by the Holly. Now, this combination actually made less than the carbureted combination did, especially at the top. This combination made 420 horsepower and 424 foot pounds of torque. But we were able to push this thing over the 600 horsepower mark first by adding a Vortex supercharger. Here's what happened when we installed a 3.6 inch blower pulley on our Vortex. Peak power jumped up to 560 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 518 foot-pounds of torque. And I'll go ahead and put the boost up for this one because we ran another combination. Obviously, this isn't a 600 horsepower combination, but we did get there. <laughs> and then we did that by installing an even smaller blower pulley to spin the blower faster. We put a 3-inch blower pulley on it. And I'll go ahead and put the boost up for that one. But that one easily exceeded 600 horsepower. 
with a peak of 645. Peak torque was 584 foot-pounds of torque. So you can see 600 horsepower, you got a good 351 heads, cam, and intake, add a little boost. And actually, in my opinion, you could also get there with the combination that I always recommend from the wrecking yard, 351, GT40 heads, put a camshaft in it, put springs on the GT40 heads. You could also use the GT40, at least the upper part of it, but you would have to get a 351 base lower combination if you wanted to run that Explorer manifold. But it still would be a good combination. Once it was cammed and boost, good things happen. Let's get to our next car. Where would any discussion on 5 liter Fords be without an actual 5 liter Ford? And that's exactly what this was. It was a 302 stock, 302 late model hydraulic roller block. It had a stock crank in it, but it did have forged rods and forged pistons, forged flat top pistons. We did that because we knew that we were going to be running nitrous and boosts and all kinds of stuff on it. But this thing also had, uh, we had gone through starting out with this thing, just bone stock with stock head, stock cam, stock intake manifold. The only thing it had obviously was, were the forged pistons, but we ran it with stock exhaust manifolds and did a series of upgrades all the way through it until we arrived at this point. And basically this was our modified version. So it had a set of aluminum heads on it. In this case, these were RHS, I think 215 heads. It also had our Extreme Energy 274 camshaft in it. And then it had a ported Holly Systemax intake manifold. The guys from Extrudone had done their magic on it, improving the flow rate quite a bit. And this combination worked out well. It produced near 400 horsepower, 395 horsepower, and 380 foot-pounds of torque. We had a 75 millimeter throttle body on this, inch and three-quarter long tube headers, and obviously we tuned it with a Holly HP management system. But what we were doing was prepping this thing so that we could add boost to it. First, we ran nitrous on it, and then we added a single turbo kit from the guys at HP Performance. Let's show you what happened when we added boost to this thing. Boom, lots of power, nice smooth curve. This combination actually worked out very well. It made over 600 horsepower. It produced 622 horsepower, and that was at a peak boost of 10.9 pounds thing produced 637 foot-pounds, so so well into the block splitting territory. And we made a lot of runs like this. We never had any problems with this. Like I said, I haven't seen that happen on the engine dyno, but we have seen we have seen the block split when we're out running actually at the track. At least the guys from HP Performance, when I was doing stuff with them, they actually hurt one. Um, the turbo stuff makes a lot of, lot of torque, as we see here. <laughs> but this was another 600 horsepower combination. Easy to do. No problems. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do you think about our 600 horsepower combinations? Here's the takeaway. It's certainly possible to make 600 horsepower in a, especially if you have 408 cubic inches. Now, it's also possible to do it with a, a lot less displacement. There's a lot of good engine builders out there that make more than 600 horsepower, even from a 5-liter motor, but it gets fairly expensive. It's a lot easier to do it with a big stroker motor or with boost as we did on our other combinations. And here's what I want you to remember. You don't have to duplicate the exact combination that I built. If you're going to add boost to any 302 or any 351 or any 408 for that matter, you can put almost anything that you wanted. If you start out with a little bit less power than I did on the NA combination, all it takes is a little more, more boost to get to the same power level. And if you add even more boost, you can make even more power. So go to the wrecking yard, get Get a 302 or a 351, use those cheap GT40 heads, add springs, add a camshaft. You can, on the 302, run the Explorer intake manifold and then start adding boosts. Lots of good things will happen. Same thing with the 351. Get the 351, use the GT40 heads, get a different intake manifold on it because, quite frankly, the, the factory EFI intake manifold on the truck is not that great, but you can still use it. Put a camshaft in it, put springs in it, add boost. The sky is the limit. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. 700 horsepower coming up next.